So right at the top of the site and we've got neighbour's barn to one side and we've got the pod to this side. As the track comes around that corner, what we've planted over time is you can see there's a whole row of black current. So as you come around, you're walking around a whole black current production system. And it's easily, I'd say, 50 meters, maybe more, of you know, really quite densely planted uh, black current. Inside that, a little bit away from the track, so a little bit further away from you know vehicle tires and wheelbarrow tires, we've got Yosterberry. Now they went in as cuttings, I think, last year. Some of them took, some of them didn't, but it doesn't matter because enough of them took that now we've got this variety. It does well locally, we know that, and you can see, you know, they're, they're just going to come along really aggressively. They're going to do fine. So we've got another row of them, again, 50 meters odd of them inside that. Inside that, we've got a few bits and pieces like, still think that's alive. Yep, it is. That is a uh, Aster. That's just there as a pollinator attractant. They go nuts for it, so it brings them in. But mostly, I want to have, you know, so things like that don't matter. That's absolutely fine, just, you know, within the system. This here is an American elder. Now, this was put in as a single tiny plant two years ago, and you can see how much it spread sideways. And they put up these huge shoots. You can take these off and just, you know, regrow. And it's the easiest thing in the world to propagate. They propagate really aggressively. It's an incredibly tough plant. And like European elder, which will turn into an actual tree, this thing will turn into a thicket that's about two and a half meters wide and about two and a half meters high. And it'll just stay at that size. And you can come through, you take it off the ground, it'll just grow straight back again. So I've got more of those and we're going to put those in a row down as an inner, inner edge to this. So we've got a double row food forest system and then we've got the elder as well inside of that as, you know, a really nicely layered um, food forest system coming around this corner that also creates the wind predominantly coming in from the west and southwest in winter it just puts a big block on that system because these things will thick it out to the point you know very very dense stems and they'll you know bigger once they're touching that's a huge amount of protection on the inside even when they haven't got leaves on and also if a massively severe storm did come through and cause a huge amount of damage to them they don't care we just cut them off of the ground love and they go straight back the next year so i want a row of them down here but this is the thing plans evolve and systems evolve so we have to be ready to change with them this is something that we planted a good while ago this is a uh, saskatoon was it a juneberry i think isn't it um and it's done really well they love it here it's done very very well but now it's in the way so it's going to get moved. Um, it's early enough in the year, I'm not too concerned, but it's going to get moved. Also, I have a few. So that's just a conventional European elder. We've got a couple of, actually, there's quite a few elder in this. We've got some currants here. They're actually just in flower now. I don't know what variety they are, so I don't really want them intermingling with these currants because it's too easy for them to get mixed up in terms of batches of fruit or even worse, cutting material if we're, you know, selling trees further down the line or whatever. So these again need to move. This is absolutely fine because it's not similar to anything else here. I seem to think that, that looks like an apple tree. Um, and that's about it other than a couple more elder. So we're gonna move the Saskatoon further over here. Next to that, it is, is a Laxton Superb Apple. This is an autumn olive. So that'll you know really bush out behind the American elder. This will really bush out and it's a huge nitrogen fixer and they do well here. It just takes a little while to get established. So that'll take a little while, but again, we'll fill this space. So this whole area here then becomes a very dense shelter belt food forest, you know, inner shelter belt food forest. Um, so first things first, I'm going to get these dug out and then I'll show you the American elder. Well, I've lost my camera person, so it's just me again. But um, see, I've got all of the currents out of the ground. And I actually took out that suspected fruit tree just to neaten up the whole row. Everything was coming out really nicely. It's nice moist soil at the moment. So I've got pretty much a clear run. I also have, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with them yet, but I've also got the European elder. Now these are so easy to propagate. I don't know if I'll replant them or not. I probably will. I can't ever just let a tree die. In fact, let's go put them in the shade. But um, I won't necessarily plant them. Um, I just can't bring myself to commit to them dying. Right, so the American owl is ready to go in. So this is going to make a complete run from here all the way down. But you can see just how aggressively these things spread. You can see they're just putting up 
new shoots right at the edge of the pot there already so i'm very very happy with it this is just going to go in as a complete unit but some of the others i can divide up individual into individual trees so you can see there's a few come through in that one so i'll get them planted up i get them into the ground and then i'll show you you know what sort of run we're looking at and then i got one more thing i'm going to do with them today so there we go there's a nice american elder and then 1.8 meters away there's another one another 1.8 meters you get the idea to there to there and then to the original mother plant now that will eventually fuse into because obviously they're close enough that the clumps will grow together and we'll have a nice run of them all the way along but i want to give them a bit of a hurry up now this grows incredibly aggressively but only to a certain size so it's not invasive but it will grow you know very large very quickly but not quickly enough for my liking so i'll show you quickly what i'm going to do right i'm going to do this left-handed which will be a little awkward but that's one there we go two three four and let's take this one as a fifth so you can see already the new shoots are starting to come through see where it's really starting to expand you know really nicely you can see in fact there's another one at the back there starting to come through so and there so it's really turning into a nice clump already but what i want to do is between each plant with roots and plant with roots midway between the two I just want to put that into the ground as a cutting deep enough so that I've got at least one I'll give that an extra shove but at least one set of nodes below root level so I'm going to do that all the way down because five is plenty and then I'll have one at less than every meter and that will grow in very very quickly so at that point I'll have a complete run of American elder here then Yosterberry then blackcurrant so I'll have a three stage food forest system that are along a path that I walk along multiple times a day and I can really see what's coming along almost ready for harvest it's uh it's going to look really pretty once it's filled in 